And so I feel like that's the way it is with Star. I mean, it's, Athena's still part of my life. And uh, so people don't understand that who don't know her, but Athena, Athena, I would love to have had Athena met Star because I think they would have probably yeah, hit it off. Well. Yeah, I think they'd have hit it off because they're both into fashion and they're both into things and uh, socially connected and it was quite interesting. Okay, well thank you for sharing that part. Yeah. Touching on bereavement, one of the things in your latest book, just bending down here, which is The Heart of Love, and that's part of what you're promoting out here, isn't it? Well, uh, one of the products, I've got lots of products and books and things, but this, mm -hmm. the newest book I have is The Heart of Love. And in here you also talk about bereavement. I have a whole chapter on that. So let's look at, say, bereavement with, say, a parent or a child. Yeah. Um, have you had that experience? Are your parents still? My parents both passed. Okay. Yeah. And, and how, how long ago was that? Let's see. My mom has been almost five years. September will be five years. Yeah. My father has been 97, so that's 10 years. Ten years. And did you find a similar, as you spoke about in Athena passing and how you dealt with that, did you find it was the same with your parents? Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I really, I've, I've worked with so many people that have had deaths in their family that, that I have a science about it. I'm absolutely certain. And I, I've worked with people that had uh, double deaths. And I watched a lady in Johannesburg that had four kids killed in a car accident at the same time, her daughter, her, her, her kids, all four kids. And I've had the opportunity to work with them. And I've, I've studied bereavement and studied these things, and, and I'm absolutely certain that you can actually transition through that process in a matter of hours. Mm. I'm absolutely certain about it. And uh, what's interesting is people don't comprehend that because they're so accustomed to an old model of how you know, this could take years and stuff. Mm. But once you understand how the mind works and how it functions, and I outline exactly how to do it in the book. It's literally a step-by-step -step process how to do it. So it doesn't have to be months or years or even weeks, it can be hours. It can take a person, because I've had the opportunity in, in my Breakthrough Experience program, I actually take people every weekend who've had deaths in the family, and I take them through it. We just this last week in New Zealand, I just did that. A lady, we did it, and it didn't even take an hour. We took her through, somebody that passed away about a month ago, and we took her through the whole process until she was sitting there with tears of gratitude, honoring the passing. So are you saying that, that she would not have any feelings of sadness, grief after that? Didn't have it. Nothing She's happened. grateful. The only way you can have sad, see, when you're infatuated with somebody and you see way more benefits and drawbacks, then what happens is you create dopamine in the brain and then kephalons and endorphins in the brain. And then if you withdraw from that or it goes away from you, you have withdrawal symptoms. And withdrawal symptoms are withdrawal of, you know, withdrawal from a dopamine, which is bereavement, grief, sorrow, loss, and the same symptoms you can have are sometimes the same symptoms as an addiction withdrawal. And so what happens is if you go in there and you bring them off the pedestal and balance out your perceptions and see them as they really are. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, see, if you're infatuated with somebody and you just met somebody and you're highly infatuated with them and then they dump you, you're broken. You have the same symptoms. Withdrawal, broken heart, uh, you're devastated. If you resent somebody and they leave, you join, you celebrate. So if you have more negatives and more drawbacks and more challenges and supports and benefits and positives, then if somebody leaves you, you have joy. You celebrate. They're gone. Thank God they're gone. But if there's a more positive than negatives, you feel remorse. So those are two polarities that occur. And if you bring those into balance and see people for who they are, not the fantasy you made or the nightmare you've made out of them, but who they are. Because you live with somebody for a long enough period of time, you find out the things you had them on a pedestal are brought back into balance and you see them as a person with things you like and dislike. I always say that love is a synthesis of opposites, things you like and dislike. I explained it in the book. When you bring those into balance, whether they come into your life or out of your life, you feel gratitude and love. And so what I do is I've developed a system to ask questions to help them see the new forms that emerge. So when somebody passes, new people emerge in your life. Just like Star emerged in my life, I mean, two days after Athena passed, there was a lovely lady that lives on the Gold Coast. I was on the Gold Coast. A lovely lady came by and said, anything I can do for you if you need to go to dinner or you want me to pick up anything, you want me to do anything for you? And I said, no, I'm, I'm working. I'm answering emails because 8,000 emails came in. 8,000? 8, 8,000 emails came in. I was inundated with emails. Hold that thought. We've got to take another break. We'll come back to it. 8,000 emails. Stay with us. <laughs> 